us today. Um, Dr. Derek and Dr. Amanda are from Floss Academy, and we have Alexa Long, who's one of our wonderful OTs, and she will kick off the meeting. So Alexa, go ahead. And we'll do questions after both presentations. Sorry, I don't know that one. All right. So my name is Alexis. I am one of the occupational therapists here in the Wheaton location for Bluebird. And I'm going to be talking today about preparing for the dentist and how to best help prepare our kiddos for this new or maybe scary experience. Um, I'm going to be talking about different activities and ways we can help prepare the kids, um, either at home or in the school or at the different clinics. Um, I'm going to talk about regulation supports while at the appointment. Um, I'll talk about different things to consider when picking appointments or picking different offices. Um, and then I'll briefly touch on some tips for brushing teeth. So here are some preparation activities. First and foremost, you want to help by starting to practice and desensitize the mouth. A lot of our kids have uh, sensory processing and integration difficulties, especially with the mouth. Um, some kids seek out that oral input, so want all the inputs in the mouth. And then on the reverse, some kids want want no input, are very aversive to things even near their mouth. So how do we tackle that? First, we want to start by practicing and just getting used to opening the mouth, things near the mouth, et cetera. So we want to get familiar with opening and closing the mouth, having someone else in the mouth, controlling things, controlling movements in the mouth, as well as having tools in the mouth. So at home, you can use um, nook brushes. It's kind of like an oral motor teether different teethers, toothbrush, Z-Vibe. Um, we had one little boy at Wheaton who really liked looking in other people's mouths with the flashlight, kind of light everything up, see everything that's in there. Um, things you want to practice and try are counting the different teeth. So you can have the kid open the mouth and be like, okay, it's time to count our teeth and kind of move the tool over the different teeth. Or if we're just getting started, just simply opening the mouth and counting and then closing the mouth. Um, another thing we can do is start desensitizing the teeth to having tools in the mouth, especially the tools that aren't controlled by them. So controlled by someone else. So rubbing the different tools mentioned above in the mouth, around the teeth, in the on the inside of the teeth, outside of the teeth, gums, lips, etc. Um, and you want to slowly ease into it. So at first you can take turns being the dentist. Um, so you can have them try it on you first, then you try it on them. Do it in slow little increments and increase as the kiddo tolerates it. Um, you want to make it a fun experience, make it funny. Um, another thing a lot of our kids liked to do is look at their teeth in the mirror. So having either in the mirror or in the front facing camera of a tablet or a phone, just kind of exploring and seeing exactly everything that's in there. The next idea would be using play-based activities. So our kids learn best through play. Um, and the best way to get buy-in is by doing things that kids are interested and motivated in. So a lot of our friends love Play-Doh. So there's actually a dentist Play-Doh kit. A lot of the clinics have it, daycare, schools, et cetera. Um, so just having the kids pretend to be the dentist using the different tools in the mouth. And um, there's actually a picture of the said dental kit from Play-Doh. Um, another idea is to practice on dolls or stuffed animals, especially if your kid's really into those. So there's this really cute alligator from Amazon that has, it's a little creepy, but has real life teeth, or not real teeth, but teeth, what looks like real teeth that you can actually floss in between. So it's a great tool to help with flossing. But for those first starting, just having the kid brush their teeth, count their teeth, kind of imitating what you guys were practicing before, but on the animal or starting with the animal and then working your way up to your kid. Um, there's a lot of brushing visuals as this little girl here is using. So you kind of take a marker, um, mark like dirt or dirty areas of the teeth and have the kid practice using a toothbrush to brush away their dirty parts. Um, for those of our little friends who love cars, you can draw on cars with a marker or use shaving cream or whatever's around um, and clean the cars with the toothbrush, wash it off, just a kind of talking about the dentist, but in a way that's more relatable to them. Um, and another idea is brushing quote unquote teeth made from other household items. So Legos, um, an upside down 
um, egg carton, something with bumps and grooves, um, kind of practice and having them have control of brushing or cleaning the teeth. Another idea is books and videos. A lot of our friends are very visual learners and this is very motivating and very big interest of theirs. So there's various social stories. There can be ones that are very generic for just in general going to the dentist or there's ones that can be made more specific to the different clinics. Um, I know Floss Academy has one too for us to see later. Um, just to kind of show a better understanding and real pictures of what the kids are going to experience. Um, looking at pictures or watching videos of kids going to the dentist. This is especially, um, can be especially helpful if you watch like real life pictures, so not animated or real life videos. So the kid can kind of see what's going to happen, get a real understanding of what's going to happen. Um, but also on the flip side, watching favorite TV shows or movies um, of kids going to the dentist. So I know Daniel Tiger has an episode where he goes to the dentist. Blippi has an episode. There's an episode of Bopple Gubbies. So kind of just cruising and finding those shows. Um, the purpose of using the books and the videos would be to explain exactly what is going to happen. So letting the kid know step by step, first we're going to go, be in the waiting room, um, exactly what the different sensory aspects are going to be, um, express feelings or emotions. So let them know how they may feel, how it might be scary, but reassuring them that parents are there, the dentist is really nice, things like that. Um, and how to react to certain situations. So tell exactly what the dentist or hygienist is gonna do and then how the kid can react or how what's an expected behavior. Um, and then the main purpose is just to kind of gain a better understanding of what's gonna happen um, to help ease any anxiety, especially because the unknown is very scary. Oops, sorry. So I'm also gonna touch on regulation supports during visits, both sensory supports and emotional regulation. So the dentist is a new environment, can be really loud, really, the lights can be really bright, lots of different tools. So how can we best support from a sensory standpoint? You can um, help by bringing headphones if audio is really loud. I know there's lot, a lot of times there's offices can be close together, lots of people in and out. I mean, find noise canceling ones or ones that can connect to a phone or tablet so that they can be listening to music or watching their favorite shows or playing their games, whatever it is. Um, you can help bring fidgets, lots of different types of fidgets, um, any kinds of comfort items, dolls, animals, blankets, whatever it may be, um, a weighted blanket or a lap pad. The point of a weighted blanket or lap pad, it provides that proprioceptive input, so that input to the body, the chest, the legs, that helps calm down the nervous system. Um, bringing your own sunglasses. Um, I know a lot of times offices will provide glasses, but Maybe your child has a very specific type of glasses they really like to wear, or maybe they have just whatever. Um, and then another idea is a preferred water bottle or water cup. I know some of our friends have difficulties drinking from different types of cups. So just being able to have something, because I know you, sometimes you have to rinse and spit. So just having that option in case that is the case. Some other things to consider for emotional regulation would be checking out the room beforehand or allowing extra time to kind of let the kid explore the room, see everything that is in there, um, hype up the big cool chair. Sometimes some people call it a magic chair or make it fun and a rocket ship to the moon, whatever it may be. Um, talk to the dentist or the hygienist so that they can help talk through each step of what's gonna happen to increase understanding for the kid of exactly what's gonna happen, when it's gonna happen, um, provide warnings and before going into the mouth. So having them talk through, be like, okay, we're gonna brush your teeth now, let's open, um, just to ease that anxiety. Another idea is having them show the tool and what it does before it goes into the mouth, just to help ease that anxiety. The more information, sometimes the better, especially for some of our friends. Um, another idea is to practice on an animal or a stuffed animal, not a real one. Um, or a doll first. So as this picture, this hygienist is brushing the little guy, the little dragon's teeth. Um, in the picture below, the hygienist is kind of showing the little boy what that specific tool does. And then that's a great way too, to help tie it back and make it more meaningful and in a way the kiddos really understand. So some things you can consider um, when choosing an office, when you're making your appointments, 
Um, does the office have experience with this client population? Not all places necessarily have the experience, have the knowledge um, to deal with the different sensory components or the emotional components or maybe the behavioral components. Um, some offices offer desensitization visits. So I know there's an office in Glen Allen, which is pretty close for our Wheaton families, yeah. mm -hmm. offers specific visits. Um, they call them desensitization visits. So this is where the kiddo can come in and there's multiple before like the cleaning or the first official treatment. Um, they get to know the dental hygienist, yeah. the dentist, kind of see the room, see the tools, but in slower and shorter increments. So it's not coming. Um, another thing to consider would be the appointment time, room placement, and anesthesia or sedation. So I'll go a little bit into each of these. So for experience with the client population, some things you can see are checking the website. Some websites straight up tell you, yes, we have experience working with autism, Down syndrome, all the different learning and cognitive disabilities. Um, asking for recommendations from the schools, daycares, therapy clinics. Um, I know Bluebird has a good long ongoing list of places that we recommend that we've had asked our families and put all of those together in a document. Um, searching different Facebook groups. I know this is really popular, especially out in the suburbs um, to get recommendations from other parents, people who are also going through this, um, reading reviews, desensitization visits, like I talked about before, and calling for consults. <clears throat> Okay, when booking your appointment, you might wanna consider booking one for non-peak hours. So when there's not as much commotion going on, so not as many people in there. So either being the first or the last appointment of the day. And then you wanna consider too, if the appointment time is gonna disrupt daily routines. So is it during nap time? Is it during too close to meal time, lunch or dinner? Or is it in the middle of the day? So they may have to be pulled from therapy or go back to therapy after, just kind of, want to set our kiddos up for success. Um, you want to consider, you could also ask for different rooms. So asking for a room that's away from the lobby. So one that's not as loud, um, a room with limited distractions. So maybe one that doesn't have a ton of stuff on the walls or big bright pictures um, or asking for a room that has a little extra space for maybe some more parent figures, um, extra guardians, brothers, sisters, et cetera, just from a comfort standpoint. Um, and another thing to consider would be does, is anesthesia a sedation? So does the office, uh, does the office provide this? Is this something that the office is comfortable with and provides? Um, what types of appointments would an anesthesia or sedation apply to? So is it only done for just for cavities or is it only, or are they also able to do it for a deep thorough clean? Just something to consider. Um, also the location of the visit, if it is used, so is the anesthesia or sedation used in the dental office or is it done in a hospital setting with everyone on call? <clears throat> then I'm gonna talk about some toothbrushing tips since this is, can be very challenging for our friends. Um, some things you wanna consider are the different types of tools and aspects to brushing your teeth. So what kind of toothbrush are you using? Is it a traditional one versus there's tons of non-traditional toothbrushes? Um, is it motorized? Is it, there's ones that have different types of bristles. Does it vibrate? Does it play music? Is there a timer? Things like that. Um, the type of toothpaste you're using. So what's the different flavors can be triggering. Is it a gel versus a foam? Different types of ingredients. Um, floss, what kind of floss? How are you gonna do it? And the same with mouthwash. However, I would definitely consult your dentist before purchasing any of those things as they know best. Some tips and tricks. Modeling and demonstration is huge. So having the parent brush their teeth first, like parent brushing the parent's teeth and saying like, okay, now it's your turn or brushing them at the same time so they can kind of see you do it. Um, having the child watch um, a sibling brush their teeth or the parent brush the sibling's teeth so they can kind of gain a better understanding of what's going on. Um, taking turns, so saying, okay, you go first and then I'm gonna go after. Um, so that they still have some autonomy and some independence with it, but then you can go in after and kind of do a more thorough job. Um, this also allows for a sense of control. Um, they, they feel like they're in, in control and they are a part of the situation. 
Um, another big thing would be timers and visuals. Um, so having a visual schedule. So you can see here, all the different steps are all type written out. There's the words as well as like a picture. So you know exactly what the different steps are. I'm using a visual timer um, so that the kiddo can see how much more time they have left before they're done brushing their teeth. I know there's tons of different songs out there that are about two minutes long and talk about brushing teeth. Flippy has one, Super Simple has one, Little Baby Bum has one. So kind of playing that at the same time or even playing it a little bit before and get them excited to brush their teeth um, and slowly working up to two minutes. So right away, if your kiddo doesn't wanna brush their teeth, they're, they're not going to brush their teeth for two minutes. So slowly working up. So maybe the first day you brush them for three seconds and then the next day, 10 seconds and then the next day, 15 seconds and working up to that two minutes. Um, you wanna make teeth brushing very routine based and very consistent. So making it part of your morning and nighttime routine. So some kids have a visual for their morning routine. So they know exactly what to expect and what they're going to do next. And just having a little picture as part of it or just incorporating it into the routine if you don't necessarily use visuals. Um, trying to be as consistent as possible with it. Our kiddos thrive on the consistency and the routine as they know exactly what to expect. Um, and start with small increments and increase as tolerated. Another big idea would be to use positive reinforcements. So using a reward or incentives, using first then language, um, or using token or sticker charts. So just kind of visualize exactly how much they have, like what they need to do and give them high praise for doing it because it can be a tricky thing. Um, last but not least, practice, practice, practice. Um, you can have the kiddo explore toothbrush on their own terms first to help them be more comfortable with it. So you can increase tolerance to them touching toothbrush to them. So first starting with the hands and then working all the way up to the mouth. I know it sounds funny, but that's the way our body works, our nervous system works. Um, and then eventually working up to the mouth. Um, you can also use, have them play with their toothbrush in different sensory bins, kind of however they want to use it. Obviously not the one they're going to use in their mouth, though, because that wouldn't be hygienic. Um, practice toothbrushing motion with different toys, so with preferred animals, dolls, stuffed animals. Um, I mentioned this earlier, but upside down egg cartons, ice cube trays, or those worksheets. Um, and another big tip would be to start with just water, as adding the toothpaste has a different smell, a different color, tastes different, temperature may be different. Um, so just first work on the toothbrush in the mouth with water, even just the toothbrush in the mouth, then add the water, then add the toothpaste. Um, and then consider water temperature um, and pressure of the input to the mouth as well. And that's that's it. Those are some tips. <laughs> Thank you, Alexis. Yeah. And we'll have Dr. Derek is up next. And I know a lot of the things that Alexis mentioned, Dr. You know, Floss Academy does. So this is a perfect segue. All righty. It's so nice to be with everyone today. Thank you again so much for having us. Can everyone hear me okay and see my screen okay? Okay, great. Um, so Alexis, that was fantastic. Um, so many of those things are so important. Preparation for whether it be the first dental visit or all dental visits are just a really great way to acclimate your kiddo, get them excited, um, tailor to their specific needs. And um, I'm Dr. Derek, along with my partner, Dr. Amanda, we are the owners of Floss Academy. We're located in the West Loop. We just opened our doors in um, December of last year. So we're excited to talk with you guys today. Today we'll be talking about the prioritization of oral health for children. We'll also go into our office and what we have to offer a lot of the things um, you will actually see that we have Alexis to discuss. All right, so the outline for today, we're first gonna talk about an introduction to pediatric dentistry, some more background on that, the importance of oral health as a whole, um, some statistics and research to oral health, some common oral health issues in children that we see, some preventative care strategies, uh, role in, of parents and caregivers in all of this. And we're also going to go into our comprehensive services and what we have to offer at Floss Academy. And then we'll also go into a question and answer session. So what is a pediatric dentist? 
So we specialize in the oral health needs of infants, children, and adolescents. So we do actually go on for two extra years beyond dental school. We focus on child psychology, growth and development, specifically treating children. We have a passion for, you know, getting to children and making a difference with them and also working with children with special health care needs to really, really create a positive space for them to propel them into a really good experience of going to the dentist to help prevent um, dental anxieties. So we do receive a special pediatric dentistry license and um, a pediatric dentist in general, our goal is to create an environment to make children feel safe, to feel comfortable and to feel like it's a place that they can call home when coming to the dentist. So we do offer a wide range of services. Every pediatric office is a little different. We'll go into detail about what we offer specifically with our office. Um, but in general, pediatric dentists offer preventative care, restorative treatments, and most importantly, behavior management techniques. So, so the next Dr. Amanda will be taking. Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Amanda. So um, why is it important for children to see a pediatric dentist? So, um, you know, we have an expertise in child development. Um, we have specialized training and we take classes in psychology, um, behavior management, growth and development. Um, and this allows us to create a positive environment for our kiddos. Um, we offer a, a wide range of services um, that are specific to children, which include preventive care, um, early intervention. We see kids, we recommend as soon as they get um, their first tooth or by age one. Um, we offer IV sedation, general anesthesia. Um, and other preventive treatments. Um, we have a child-friendly environment. We have um, we design our offices specifically for kids. Um, and you know the reason why you want to come see us is because we detect things early. It's always better to detect things early as opposed to waiting until they get um, bigger. Um, and it's our job to establish good healthcare habits. So we want to create good habits for your kiddos and kind of teach them, you know, the importance of oral health and kind of make it exciting. Okay, so going into the importance of oral health, good oral health is the fundamental uh, to overall health in general and the well-being of children. So it not only allows children to eat, speak, and socialize effectively, but it really does contribute overall to their self-esteem and quality of life. Um, what we define oral health as is the state of being free of any facial pain, any oral or throat cancer, any oral infections, um, sores, any type of gum disease tooth decay or cavities, um, premature tooth loss, or any other diseases and disorders that limit um, a child or individual's capacity in functioning as a whole, whether it be biting, chewing, smiling, speaking. Um, so it's really important to start early. Some, you know, parents aren't aware that, you know, even though they're baby teeth, they're still very important to treat. So it's really important to establish dental home early on. So a little bit of statistics and research. So according to the CDC, um, dental caries or cavities is the most common is one of the most common chronic conditions of the child of childhood in the United States, and it affects more than forty percent of children aged two to eleven. Um, so, and as we know, you know, research has linked oral health to overall health. So studies have shown that poor oral health is associated with various systemic conditions, including cardiovascular diseases, diabetes, respiratory infections, and low birth weight. So what are some common oral health issues in children that we see on average? Um, we can see cavities, also known as dental caries. We can see gum disease, and we also can see bruxism, which is the technical term for teeth grinding. So these are all things that if, you know, you do establish a dental home early on, we can detect these things, we can diagnose them at the appropriate time, and we can also provide the appropriate follow-up to manage any sort of these situations. Um, dental caries or cavities, it is one of the most prevalent chronic diseases among children, um, and this is characterized by the demineralization or basically the breakdown of the tooth structure due to bacterial acid production. Um, so we can see this even with brushing and flossing, whether it be diet, environmental factors, it's something that we see in our practice. Gum disease, um, something we're, some of us are familiar with, is essentially gingivitis in kiddos. It can actually, um, you know, if it's something that's everlasting and adulthood can lead to periodontitis, which is more severe case, um, leads to gum inflammation, bleeding, eventually tooth loss if untreated. So it's really, really important to not only take care of the teeth, but also the gums. 
bruxism or teeth grinding, it's not something that we're extremely concerned about. Um, we do appreciate parents noting this um, to us if they feel their child is going through this or they hear it. Oftentimes it's at nighttime, you can kind of hear a grinding or a, kind of an unpleasant noise. A lot of times this is part of growth and development. It usually does resolve over time. It's not something that we um, generally treat in children as, as kiddos grow um, so rapidly. So some preventive care strategies. So it's important to see us regularly. Um, so we recommend every six months um, and establishing good oral hygiene habits early. So parents, you know, we should, we do want you guys to get in there as best you can, ideally twice a day. I do like what Alexis said. Um, if your kiddo, you know, has never brushed before, um, it's probably a bit too much to jump into the toothpaste, but ideally you do want to use fluoride toothpaste um, twice a day, but ease into it, like Alexis said. Um, and then, you know, in terms of diet, you know, you know, think cavities can be caused by a lot of carbohydrates too. So you want to try to um, limit that as much as you can. Um, you want to try to have a diet that's rich in fruits and vegetables, lean proteins, anything that makes, you know, that's overall healthy for your body. Um, and then fluoride, um, we do put fluoride on a varnish on the teeth every six months. So I know, you know, when we were kids, um, you know, we had those foam fluoride trays. And so it's much different now. Um, now it's just kind of like a little paint that you paint on at the very end. And it's, it's pretty easy. So we do do that every six months. Uh, sealants as well. If the kiddo, if your kiddo is able to kind of cooperate for sealants, or if we're doing sedation, sealants are really important for permanent molars. So we like to seal all the permanent molars. It's like a little protective coating. Um, that's like as thin as nail polish that kind of seals the groove so that food and plaque and bacteria doesn't get stuck in the uh, grooves of the teeth and cause cavities. So what is the role of parents and caregivers? So we are able to do as much as possible at the dental visits and offer as much support as possible, but a lot of it is um, at home that we need to be doing the best with our, our kiddos. We know it can be very challenging. We're here to be great support for everyone. Um, just knowing the importance is, is key, right? So parents do play a, a crucial role in promoting good oral hygiene habits and healthy dietary choices in children. So, you know, in preparation for dental visits, um, and just in preparation of building, you know, propelling the kiddo into really good habits of brushing, making it fun, you know, tailoring it to your child, whether it be incentivizing brushing with a sticker chart or, you know, playing their favorite song, any way a parent can meet their child um, and meet them at their needs in, in any way possible, um, just being there for them either way. If there are any other sorts of struggles with this, um, just at least trying your best with getting in there with a the toothbrush, um, whether it be for a couple seconds to start off with, but we want to continue gradually working our way up in time. So parents should supervise their children's brushing. Um, and flossing routines, um, and again, supervising their diet and recommending healthy foods and providing the healthy foods and scheduling the regular dental checkups. We recommend every six months for checkups just as adults. Um, and again, just encouraging those healthy dietary choices and li limiting the sugary snacks. So essentially the sugary snacks that tend to cause the most cavities that we see are the stickier sugars or gummies. For example, you know, all sugar can cause cavities. The worst are fruit snacks, even compared to a piece of chocolate. Another big contributing factor to cavities that we see are the liquid sugars, um, that being juices, um, believe it or not, even sports drinks. So be very you know, conscious and careful with, with what you're providing as far as beverages go for your children. So what does Floss Academy offer? So our pediatric dental office provides comprehensive dental care service for children of all ages. Um, including preventive care, restorative treatments, and sedation dentistry. Um, and, you know, we have, we see kids with all sorts of different abilities and special health care needs. Um, and we prov provide preventive care and early intervention to promote optimal oral health and preventive, prevent dental problems in children. So this is a picture of our, two pictures of our office here. The one on the top is what we call our open bay. Um, we do have some chairs that are kind of more semi-open, um, and we but we also have off or, uh, rooms that have closed doors, which there'll be some pictures of too. And that's our uh, picture of our lobby on the bottom. So our main goal, you know, when Dr. Mann and I were going into this, you know, we wanted to make this our own. We wanted to portray our philosophies, not only that we've learned, but also what we feel is best for children. So 
we want to create a place that feels like home for families, for their children. We want it to be a safe space. Um, one of the reasons of many that we both wanted to go into this profession is to really have children excited to come see us and then have that continue for a lifetime. So again, as we stated before, we really like to tailor it to, to all children's needs. And we really like to open that conversation up. If it's the first phone call we receive, we really like to hear that information. Like, how can we help you? How can we help your child? What types of environments, you know, is best for your child? Is it more of an open space? Is it more of a private area? Um, so we really do try our best to, you know, go above and beyond um, as far as our environment goes, as far as all of, you know, any type of sensory simulations. We know it can be a lot for kiddos and we really want to be there to help as best as we can. Yeah, so like Derek was saying, here's another picture of our open bay. Um, you know, every child receives our full attention um, and our staff is kind of trained in seeing all sorts of kids with different abilities. Um, we have lots of different ways to kind of make our kids more uh, comfortable. Um, we have TVs on the ceiling if your kiddo is into that. Um, and we can kind of, they can watch their favorite show. Um, sometimes it makes it a little bit more enjoyable. Um, but if your kiddo, you know, is prefers less stimulation, we can always kind of turn the TV off. We have dimmers. We can kind of make it more quiet. Whatever you guys, whatever you might need, we can kind of tailor to your specific kiddo. So we do also have some comfort items. I know Alexis touched base on this and we, that's fantastic. Um, we do have some weighted blankets. Um, we also do have the little stuffed animals, you know, to practice brushing on, to hold on tight if they are a little nervous. Um, <clears throat> we, you know, a lot, a good enough time to the appointment to accomplish these um, special amenities too, if we need to, you know, take a pause and grab a stuffy and have the kiddo take the toothbrush first and show us, you know, what they feel like adequate brushing is. And then we jump in and demonstrate everything and work with the parent. Um, we also really love to have incentives and rewards. So we feel that every child that walks in the door deserves to be rewarded for their efforts. You know, we might not all have our best days going to any type of medical appointment and that goes to save for children, um, of, you know, of all needs. And we really want kiddos to leave with knowing that no matter what they did their best. So, as you can see here, kind of faintly in our background picture, um, we do have a little prize tower. Um, so we do have like gold coins that we give out and they're able, and kiddos are able to pick a prize of their choice. And we obviously, you know, clear this with parents first, just to make sure that it's safe for them. If, if um, their kiddo is more of a risk of swallowing, then we have other options as well. So here's a picture of um, one of our private treatment rooms. This is where we, you know, some of the kids, we, we can have some of the kids go. This is also one of the rooms where if we need to do any treatment, this is where it would be. Um, so we have, you know, like I said, these rooms have TVs on the ceiling. Um, they're more quiet. There's more room for parents. Um, there's a door. Um, and also there's dimmers on these lights as well. Um, we also have, you know, books in the front, stuffed animals like the, Dr. Derek mentioned. Um, and we also just love to kind of show our, you know, show our kiddos everything before we do it. Um, it's called t um, Tell, Show, Do in the world of pediatric dentistry. Um, and you kind of explain what you're going to do first, show them, show on a stuffy, show on the parent, and then show on the kid. So we kind of show everything so the kid is super comfortable before we do it. So um, we have lots of ways that we like to make the kids feel super comfortable. So we touched base a little bit on this too, but we really do believe in just an inclusive environment. So um, we welcome children of all abilities, all backgrounds. Um, we're trained in comprehensive pediatric dentistry as a whole. So we we want children to feel safe. We want children to feel respected and valued as well as the parents. Um, you know, at Floss Academy, we're committed to making these visits as enjoyable as possible. We know it can be challenging. We know that every child is different. Um, and we'll, we'll go into the services that we offer, but we really do have an option for all children um, of any type of healthcare needs. Um, we'll touch base on sedation a little bit in a second here. And um, again, most importantly, we just want everyone to feel safe and respected. Okay, so we do have sedation options at Floss Academy. So um, there are a couple of different things that we offer. So um, I'll go into actually nitrous oxide first. So a nitrous oxide, 
um, is la is laughing gas. And this is for kiddos who are able to, you know, cooperate, but just need a little bit of something to help them relax a tiny bit more. Um, so it kind of reduces the anxiety and fear, um, and it kind of enhances their cooperation. Now, if the kiddo, this does require the kid to kind of, to sit somewhat still and have something on their nose, which some kids don't like. So, um, for the kiddos that, you know, and if they, if we do find cavities and we do need to get something fixed or we need to take out a tooth, we do have IV sedation as well. Um, so we do bring in a pediatric, um, anesthesiologist who is a medical doctor and MD. Um, they come to our office once a month, they bring nurses, they have all, the whole monitoring, um, everything for it to monitor the kiddos. Um, and if we do do IV sedation, then the kid is completely asleep. And, you know, for if the kid has never had a good cleaning or x-rays, we'll do that then when we'll fix any tooth that um, it needs to be fixed. So typically I tell parents, you know, if the kid, if I'm not able to get x-rays, um, we usually start x-rays around age five, but if I'm not able to get x-rays, that doesn't, necess that doesn't necessarily mean we should sedate the kid. Okay. So, you know, if the, if I'm not, if I look inside the kid's mouth and I'm not seeing any signs of cavities, we're not going to just sedate your kid just to get x-rays. What we typically do is we will kind of, you know, look and see every six months. And if there is something that we're suspicious about, then we would sedate the kid at that point. Then we would take a full set of x-rays, do a full cleaning. If the kid has never been able to sit through a full cleaning um, and fix whatever cavity we see and seal all any permanent teeth that are there as well. And just to kind of piggyback off of that as well, I know Alexis was mentioning that every office is a little different of what they have to offer. We do offer desensitization appointments. Again, we really like to open up the conversation with parents. What are your goals for your child? What are you looking for in a pediatric dentist? We have um, the resources. Um, Dr. Amanda and I tend to be a little bit more conservative with our approach, um, but definitely definitive when, when need be. Just as Dr. Amanda was saying, we're not just going to sedate if we can't get x-rays. It's going to be if we see a visible cavity or if we're, we're seeing something suspicious, we, we can do sedations for deep cleanings. Again, that's definitely something that we like to meet um, parents um, halfway with and just open that, that dialogue up. Um, we offer emergency appointments. Um, we do anything from doing, you know, white fillings to crowns to extractions, um, space maintainers, and we're happy to answer any questions about our services too. So here is um, our contact information, um, which we can also provide um, as we're all finished with all of this. But again, we are located in the West Loop. We're on Madison Street. Um, and we also have um, some parking available as well, which we're happy to provide. Those are our references. And then we can jump into this. Yeah, so we made a social story just for Floss Academy. It's going to be very quick. So um, I'm going to the dentist. Um, everyone goes to the dentist. So this is just for floss. So we kind of put all of our photos in there. All right. You can take the next one, Dr. Derek. Yep. And then the dentist helps keep my teeth clean and healthy. I will wait in the waiting room until the dentist comes to get me. I will play with my toys or look at fun books. The dentist will bring me to a special room with a big comfy chair. The dentist may wear a mask, coat, and gloves when they look at my teeth. I will open my mouth wide so the dentist can see my teeth. The dentist will use special tools to count, look at, and clean my teeth. The tools may look scary, but the dentist will keep me safe. I might feel worried when I'm at the dentist's office, but that's okay. I am safe. Mm -hmm. If I am feeling nervous, I can take deep breaths, ask for a hug, or hold someone's hand. Everyone will be so proud of me after my visit to the dentist's office. I will be proud of me, too. And that's it. That's awesome, you guys. You and guys what cuties. Mm -hmm. Those cute little kiddos. Yeah, so we, we're happy to provide that to anyone who would like to you know, show their child that. But again, we're, we're here for you guys. Does anybody have any questions for the doctors or for Alexis? Or open it up. You could put it in the chat or you could raise your hand. You're welcome, Crystal. She said, thank you for this information. You're welcome.
This is Kirsten Sorensen. I have one quick question, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, I have uh, three kiddos and our youngest is our five-year-old son with Down syndrome. And um, we try to go to the dentist every six months, um, but we've just kind of run into a um, issue with just comfort and overall access at our dentist. Um, our current dentist is trained in special needs, but um, I just don't like kind of the care and the, and the feel that we have right now. So being a potential new client, would I have a phone interview before making an appointment or how does a new client go about getting into Floss Academy? So we are currently accepting new patients. Um, so all you would really have to do is give us a call. We can get all of your information down, all of your child, your children's information down, and we're happy to schedule their first appointment. So there's um, really no wait list or anything like that. Does that answer your question? I think so. Yeah. And I, I guess I just wanted to troubleshoot too, to make sure that the first appointment yeah, was as right. smooth as possible. Right. Definitely. And then we just, you know, at that point, so we have um, Kiana, she's our office assistant who is trained by us. Um, we just like to, again, like we said, open up the floor. So any requests or any questions you have, we really do appreciate those at that first phone call. Um, and if there's anything that Kiana is unable to, to answer, she can connect us on the line as well. Fantastic. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Any other questions? I have a question. Yeah, sure. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I am so sorry. Uh, hi, my name is Chase, and um, I have a three-year-old, and she is autistic. Um, she's already starting to brush her teeth, like she lets me brush her teeth. Um, but it is time for us to find a dentist. And um, your office is located, you said, in the West Loop. I was wondering, um, do you guys ever have, because my kiddo has a thing with new places and I have to kind of take her to places first before she could acclimate, before she will, you know, let anybody do anything to her. Um, do you ever have where people visit your office and just kind of um, let them assimilate to the office first, even before you even attempt to treat them or anything? Yeah. Come on by and say hello. We'll show, we'll give you a tour. You can meet us, whatever doctor's there that day and kind of get the kids comfortable, kind of show them the rooms for sure. Okay, we'll be so that is- make that like a 15 minute appointment just yeah, so you know I they're mean, coming and- You know, right now we're, you know, we're, we just opened a couple, six months ago. So we have time. You don't even really need to make an appointment for that really. If, you know, you can just come say, you know, give us a call and let us know you're on your way. Um, and then you can schedule an appointment after that. Um, when we get busier, um, probably an appointment will be necessary. Um, but for now, you know, you can always just call us and say, you want to stop by. That'd be totally fine. Oh, that's fantastic. I will give you guys a call. Thank you so much. You're yeah. welcome. If you'd like to prepare in advance, we can just put a little block on the schedule saying that you're going to stop by and then we're, we'd yeah. be happy to see you guys. Okay. And, yeah, um, I'll do that. I'll just phone beforehand just to make sure that you guys are, you know, someone's free. Um, right. And again, it's just to kind of let her, you know, see the waiting room and just sure. go to a new place type of yeah, thing. Yeah, we understand. Um, yeah. Jennifer asked if, um, of course, thank you for all the information. And do you have any other um, recommendations for someone? Do you have any other pediatric dentists that you might know in the North and Northwest suburbs? Yeah. Um, so I used to work at an office in Northbrook. Um, they're now called, they rebranded, but they're called the Pediatric Dentistry of the North Shore. Um, they have an office in Northbrook and Highland Park, and they're great, all of them. Oh, great. Yeah. So that's the pediatric dentistry in the North Shore. Yeah. And they're all awesome. All There's three doctors there and they're wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you. I'll, yeah. I'll make a note of that too mm -hmm. for when people ask. Do you know anyone in Wheaton? <laughs> I don't know. I, that's I, where our other I grew up is. in the city, so I don't really, I'm, which direction is that? What's, where else it's is west. this? West. My, my neighborville. <laughs> By yeah. Naperville. So I have a list, uh, or Wheaton has a list of Ooh. clinics that a lot of our families have been to and have had good experiences with that I can share as well. 
I don't know too much in that direction. So I don't want to give, give no, a absolutely. place that I don't know personally. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Alexis. And you could give me those and I could, we could put them on the uh, website. Sounds good. That's awesome. Any other questions? Well, I think that will be it. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Dr. Derek, Dr. Amanda, and Alexis. This was wonderful and so informative. And um, everyone have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Bye, Bye. everyone. Bye, Bye. everyone. See, you, see you in the West Loop. <laughs> see you in the Bye. West Loop. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.